What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Bassy. I'm tuned in to another episode of Ends Podcast. Man, this episode, we diving straight into it. We going off the words of Jay-Z. Man, can I live? Can I live? Can I live, man? Um, I'm just going back through. This is like a music review, but at the same time, man, this is just juice, man. Um, and just taking in the perspective of, of Jay-Z when he first came out, he says arguably one of his best albums he thinks it's his favorite what well, to him is his favorite album to me it's oh it's a competition it's between that and american game i mean this one for sure but then american gangster is up there i ain't gonna lie that was a classic of oneself um but a lot of times you know just my whole perspective i vibe with this song i feel like it still translate to still to the day like the title even everything man can i live like you basically just talking about just trying to get it and then like you know you always hear the saying you know more money more problems man more black more problems in the hood you got problems like but he just like man can i live and he's just trying to make it out of his current situation but then seeing all the pitfalls that come with it you feel me like from just like from him just having to always be hip, him always having to always be, you know, thinking critically in the moment, coming from the streets, you know, even being in a rap game, but understanding that street mindset, he was thinking like, can I live? You know, he always got stuff to watch out for. He always got to be mindful for things. He always had to be, you know, calculated and intentional by every move and every step that he made. So I say the same thing with like this whole entrepreneurship grind, this whole lifestyle, just the just just the life that I live. You know, it's the same thing. I feel like you got to be real critical about every move that you make. You feel me? But at the same time, it's pressure. You know, your circumstances going on around you, and it's just like, man, can I live? Like I'm just trying to just I'm just trying to create, make something great, man. Be the voice, man. Help advocate, man. For the hood, man, and just for everybody, man, that's on a grind, that's just trying to come up. Um, but at the same time, it's like, man, you got so much going on around you, man. You be like, man, can I live? Can I live, man? So I'm going to play a little bit for some of you young heads, some of you old heads. You know, I'm young my damn self, but, you know, I, I grew up in one of them type of households where... Jay-Z was played, man. We had the streets was watching. But I'm going to play a little bit for you for some of y'all that don't understand. And hopefully y'all might pick up a little bit uh, in this bar. And we might break down this bar and just see how it relates to, you know, current times right now. Every nigga watching me closely. The bread, they want to toast me. Both of them where they supposed to be. Just clap from both. I don't sleep, I'm uh. tired, I feel like I'm not gonna lie, that was crucial because he said, you know, these days a brother gotta admire me from like four fiends away, which mean he's basically saying like he's so knee deep in the game that like you can't really get close to him. Now if you think about the way Jay-Z moved today, like you gotta admire him for four security guards valet and all this type of stuff away like you know he's he did a good job at like removing himself from being accessible to everyone which means he you could be accessible to bullshit but then by by like that's just how i'm breaking it down but then when he also saying you gotta admire me from four fiends away like man i'm not that accessible like as a hustler either you feel me like you you, you feel me like you gotta work your way up to get to me like, I ain't just, you know, you could just make a phone call or you might just catch me just standing on the corner or something like that. You got to mind me from four feet away. Like, it's, you got to get in line, buddy. Like, and, and um, you know, but just going more deeper to that, where, like, he was just, like, uh, and he was just talking about, you know, like, how you could tell, like, you know, just people just scheming, you know, like, they say more money, more problems, you make money, people see you make money. Um, and, you know, people... They got their own perceptions around that. They got their own intentions around it that they build. I'm going to play it back one more time. And he said, as I see everybody watching me closely, for the bread, they want to toast me. Watching every nigga watching me closely. My shit is butter for the bread, they want to toast me. I keep my head both of them where they supposed to be. Holes to get your sidetracked and clap them close. 
Man, he basically spoke spoke about what Cardi B said when she did her raps before Cardi B even did it. You feel me? Like I keep both heads where they supposed to be, man. Cause these chicks will get you clap, you know, like <laughs> on both sides, you know, and you know him coming from that street environment, coming from the streets. You understand that, like, you know, your most vulnerable moments can literally be. Your, your last moments. So somebody could catch you with your pants down, um, you know, and that could be everything for you. Uh, but then also, it was just saying that, like, you, you feel me, don't be just, you know, jumping, you know, from every chick, you feel me? Like, don't let, basically, man, don't let your dick dry you, you feel me? Don't, don't, don't get lost up in that because in this valley, you know, it's valleys and peaks. You feel me? Like, everybody gonna want you at some point in time because you're you gonna be, like, the hottest thing out. Or, like, you like a hot product. But don't fall for that trick because motherfuckers are still scheming on you. So don't think... So learn how to use both of your heads. You feel me? So it don't, you know, disrupt your life. But then, you know, that one boy, like, he, he, he just came off the gates just dropping jewels. Like, man... He said, my junk butter for the bread, they want to toast me. Man, I cannot keep both heads where they supposed to be. Because in this game, man, and just in the game of life, business, sports, entertainment, whatever industry that you're in, whatever it is that you do, you have to be able to think critically. And you also got to, you know, minimize this, you know, minimize your distractions. And depending on what environment you're in, you don't even have time for distractions because your distractions could cause your whole downfall. And we're going to go through just different scenarios with that too. Um, like, you don't really see too many professional athletes pay too much attention to what's going on in the, you know, like with the fans. Because if they do, because they're in an emotional, they're in an aggressive state of mind, you feel me? They might react, so they can't really get caught up in what's going on outside of that because they need all that energy to be invested into the game that they playing. So it's like keeping that tunnel vision. Now we have seen in the NBA where sometimes some players may may uh, may get distracted by the fans and how that played out. You feel me? Like it's a lose lose for you. You feel me? If you get distracted, you take your eyes off the game because now it's like no longer you no longer concentrate on the game, but now you just got tricked out of the game. You interact with them fans, you do something wrong, say the wrong thing, anything like that. You you guarantee suspended because why? It's the why because it's your organization's best interest to keep the fans happy. So you basically just let the fans trick you off the streets. <laughs> Long story short, you will let a fan trick you off the streets. If we're talking in an athlete term, so it's like staying staying in that staying in your own mind. Like man, keep my head in the game, man. Like let me not focus on what's going on over there. Let me not. Like, try to cheer too much with the cheerleaders. Or let me not get caught up in what the cheerleaders doing while I'm trying to be over here looking at what coach supposed to be saying so I can understand the player's supposed to be ran. You know, I keep both heads in the game. You know, I ain't I ain't seeing who watching me. I ain't, and also, I ain't getting caught up on who is watching me too much, you know. But, I'm, but you know, I'm hip. You know, I'm hip. Like what he said, like, I'm, I'm hip. I'm hip, you know. So I ain't gonna really go too far, you know, talk too much, man. But as y'all see, man, that was just the first couple bars of the song, man. Take the time out, man. Go listen to it to yourself. I feel like a lot of us can relate to it if you don't already know about the song because it is an iconic song. But the song is called, you feel me, Jay-Z, Can I Live? And if you listen to Reasonable Doubt, you'll see why they say Jay-Z is arguably one of the best rappers of all times. You know, that's another debate for another podcast episode. But the question of the day, man, can I live? And if God woke you up today, I feel like he gave you the answer. So it's your boy Bass. Y'all tuned in to another episode of Ends Podcast. And we out of here, man. If you want to support, show that free support, man. Like, share, subscribe. But then also, man, if you want to be loud and proud with it, man, take a stance, man. Go ahead, man. Go buy some of that merch, man. Represent, man. Let them know that you the voice of the culture, man. But it's your boy Bass, and we out. Peace.